Okay, are we rolling? Okay. All right, go ahead and introduce me. <laughs> it's me, you know me, I'm Josh, and this is Vanessa. You probably know Vanessa, and if you don't, it's Vanessa Grant. And Vanessa's gonna just give us the quick one-two on who she is, what she's all about, and what she's doing here at Salesforce DF21. What's going on, Vanessa? What's going on? <laughs> um, we are on the last day of Dreamforce right now. Uh, my name is Vanessa Grant. I'm a senior consultant at Simplis. How I got an invite to this very exclusive Dreamforce, I'm not quite sure, but there were about 1,200 of us invited. Um, there are lots of MVPs here, lots of community group leaders, but there's also been people that have never even gotten certified that just started getting into the ecosystem. So there's a really nice mix of folks. And it's been kind of like a family reunion vibe since I've been here. I'll bet, and this is, I think you said earlier, it's your fifth, your fifth dream force? My, my third dream force. Third dream force. Third dream force. force. Okay. But this is the first one that I feel like I'm doing properly, where I came as a customer previously, and so I was just going to sessions and doing demos, and yes, what can I do to add value for the company? And this is the first time where I'm really connecting with folks that, uh, that I've, been communicating with over the course of the last year, particularly with the pandemic, everybody's been virtual. And so those connections that we've made with people in the ecosystem kind of been the only way to connect with people and network and, and right. all the community groups have been virtual for the last for the last year. So I've been doing community groups in, you know, India and New York right. and Florida, whatever. Um, and so this has been a great opportunity um, for really the most uh, active folks that are in the ecosystem to really get together and like even hug. I mean, we have done, I've, I mean, I think I've done four COVID tests since Friday. So You're kidding me. No, I had to take an at-home one on Thursday, an at-home one on Friday. Um, I had to do, I had to submit it in person on Monday, do another one on Tuesday, and everyone has to be negative in order for you to get in. But and fair enough. Yeah, and fair enough. Yeah. But but it makes it so much easier to like just kind of feel confident hugging somebody also it's nice it's outdoors this year so and i'm a hugger so yeah. i know what that's like to go without hugs for a long time it's tough stuff so okay oh, are all we right. hugging we're Aww. hugging now there Aww. we go all right so you've been pretty active in the community do you think that it was uh since COVID that really got you super active or do you feel like you were always uh, being active on Twitter and in chat groups and things like that beforehand. No, it's definitely been COVID. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm a little bit of an extrovert, but I've always been better about it when I've had the kind of semi anonymity of having the sure. like the internet in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it just feels weird to like kind of like if I just ran into you at some Salesforce net force networking event, like I don't know if I'd be like, hey, my name is Vanessa. But if you're going to like a community group meeting and it's all virtual for whatever reason. I don't know, I guess maybe other people get more uncomfortable, but I get more comfortable. And so it's, I don't know, it's just been a little bit easier to to find like groups of people and, and connect with them, uh, you know, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis for, for, I don't know, it's just been easier. Uh, that was a weird answer, but it's, no, it's, a, it's not. It's not a weird answer. I, I know someone, someone I, that, that worked with me for a very long time, so active in online communities, not necessarily Salesforce. Um, honestly, it could be about like really cool, crazy keyboards, like old fashioned keyboards or like doing weird programming on old Game Boys, things, weird things on Reddit. Right. But he can be super active and be an administrator of, over these groups with thousands and thousands of people. and. You know, he's an outgoing guy, but you'll never see him at a party, right? Like that kind of a thing? Yeah. Although you seem like you might like a good party. You, you know what? As long as I know other people in the room, then I'm okay. But if it's a, a room full of people, especially... If it's, if it's a room full of people, especially folks that I might... I, I think on a professional level, I get intimidated really easily by people that know a lot. Um, and so, is that why you're so comfortable with me? <laughs> well, thankfully we've had lots of conversations <laughs> over the last year. That's right. But, uh, but I mean, you certainly intimidated me when we first started chatting. I mean, even when we started going on Clubhouse, every time I spoke, I don't, I mean, I, that's one of the things you can't hear it on the phone, but I would be shaking. Really? Oh yeah. Uh, that's, sho that's shocking to me. You always seem like you, you, you got it. Like your brain works. It's the lizard it's good, brain. It's a good brain. <laughs> it's a good brain. Your brain works. So yes, you have been active on Clubhouse, and 
I, you know, I got to thank you in person for helping me because sometimes on the ask ask me anything show, it it becomes the ask us anything show, and then I'm I'm super happy about that because I get asked a lot of questions that I just simply don't know the answers to. If it's about hiring or how to get hired or how to bring someone good on board or onboarding these sorts of things, like yeah, no problem, right? But if it's about Salesforce technology and you know what? There's all sorts of things. I think you, I think you introduced me to the Ohana Slack, and some yep. other, right, and some some other different um, uh, great places to find people and connect with people. Right now, okay. So we're September still, September 21. What are your top three favorite places to connect with people regarding Salesforce? Lately, it has been Twitter. Yeah. Like Twitter has been really big lately, yeah. um, and and for whatever reason, like. If, especially if Salesforce really likes one of your tweets, like if they throw in a comment, a lot of times it'll build some traction sure. and other people will start following you. And also what's nice is on Twitter, you can kind of talk about, you know, just kind of funny, quirky stuff. So you get to know people more on a personal basis, which is right. where I'm more comfortable. Right. So right. like on LinkedIn, I might say, yay, you know, Dreamforce 2021, excited to be here. But on Twitter, I'll talk about how, you know, having to put on my mask with my really, you know, obnoxious lipstick, you know, I took it off for the first time and it looked like I made out with the bad guy. <laughs> but I can say that on Twitter and people will laugh about it. Or, you know, we had the, the opening session, you know, Mark, Mark Benioff's talking. And on Twitter, with the whole group of people yeah. that were at there in person, like I was talking about how my thighs were, were hurting because I was squeezing them so tight so I didn't touch the person next to me because <laughs> the seats were so narrow. But I can't say that on LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe you should. <laughs> so speaking of Mark, when he called you to tell you that you were coming to Dreamforce, what did what, what did you say to him? I said, speak to <laughs> speak to my my agent. To <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, no, I mean, it was weird because when I got the invite, I kind of thought everybody was getting the invite. So I was like, oh, this is cool. How much does it cost? Oh, it's free. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm in. And then I, I discovered how exclusive it was, and I was like, oh wow, like, this is gonna be something special. Oh yeah. So I'm here at Dreamforce, but you know, only on the outside. I just came down for the free popsicles. And you know, I'm, that gets if snuck you out. Want coffee, <laughs> I think there might be some like flavored bubbled water. Oh yeah, it's I'm worth the flight to, in the hotel just for that. I will go for for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So talk to me about this. So far. So you've got two solid days under your belt here, almost two solid days yeah. of Dreamforce. What's the best, and we'll, we'll talk about the Foo Fighters in a second. Okay, but other than the Foo Fighters, and I think, is it Lionel Richie's playing right now or just did? Uh, he played yesterday. Oh, it was yesterday, see? Not on the inside. So what's been your favorite session? You know, for me, you know how active I am in, in mentoring folks yeah. and folks that are interested in, in job seeking. And so I've really enjoyed uh, Stacy Whitaker's sessions. Like she did one yesterday for job seekers on LinkedIn and resume tips. And then today she had one that even applied to me as far as how to overcome imposter syndrome. Right. And, and so we've I, talked about that on yeah. Clubhouse before. Yep. And so I've been directing a lot of the, you know, the talent stackers that I've seen here or, you know, my, my mentees that I've seen here to those sessions. And I'm happy that they even have those sessions yeah. here where it, it isn't just like, here's the architect lounge and let's talk about MuleSoft like right. like there's something for everyone even at a at an event where it's only like two days and, sure. and a, not a bajillion sessions right right I remember when we were talking on Clubhouse about imposter syndrome once and I think you were on that session um, and someone said you know always remember you get to own all of your accomplishments not just all of your mistakes not just all of the things that you haven't done yet you get to own that too that really clearly that stuck with me because I might have even written it down and so now I remember but was there, was there one tip in one of Whitaker's se sessions that really stood out like, oh, I hadn't thought of that before and you'd like to share it with people watching Josh Force right now? Um, I really enjoyed that she recommended putting down a list of all of your accomplishments and it was similar to what you just said, okay. where, where it, it's, it's not a matter of just, just thinking about all the things that, that you know, where, where you failed. It's, Okay, these are the things that I've accomplished, and there's a reason why I'm here. Like, right. if, if I if I got this job, right. and I was honest in my job interview, they are they already know where I'm at, and and I, I don't. I, there is no boundary necessarily to to 
be allowed to speak on something. Yeah. Like you are where you are. People know where you are, and they still decided that you were worthwhile to do whatever presentation or to sure. to speak on it. And so, getting down those accomplishments and really focusing on them and be like, look at, don't look at. Uh, actually, she said something I, I thought was really interesting. She said. Even if you've only had one year of Salesforce experience, don't go, oh my God, I've only gotten a year of Salesforce experience. You think, oh my God, I've got a year of Salesforce experience, which is more than I had last year, yeah. and, and this is where I am, and look at how much I've accomplished in this year. Exactly, and one of the great things about having that first year of experience in anything is it's just like drinking from the fire hose, right? I mean, you're just absorbing so much information. What happens, though, for a lot of folks is they get the sophomore slump, you've heard of that. Yes. Right, like they get a little bit of success, and then all of a sudden they, they stop progressing as fast, and they wonder why. Well, you know, it's just sort of that bell curve. It's like a lot of knowledge, and it starts to taper off. But would you agree that there are some folks out there that might have five years of experience, but really it's only one year of experience five times? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So, so for you, what are your keys to staying on top of things so that each year that you have under your belt is actually another year of better experience and growth for you? Uh, for me, I actually found that always having a certification that I'm studying for okay. really helps motivate me because it's certif It's almost like gamifying my, my own education, sure. um, where even if it's not something that I'm actively working on, um, just working on a certification, even just to get those the, the general overall understanding of what those features are that are part of that certification mm -hmm. will ultimately make me a better consultant. Yeah. And so I just keep working towards this, and that keeps me motivated to, to keep studying. So even if it's on something that I might yeah. not need until next year, I'm always studying something. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I know for me, I, I'm very much the same way. I'm not going to go out jogging unless I've got a race to go run, right? Which has been years. <laughs> so I'm not jogging. But having that goal of like, okay, this is a thing to achieve and now I've got something to work towards. And it's a specific, tangible thing. It could be a certification. It could be someone's trying to get a promotion. Maybe they're trying to get into shape. Maybe they're trying to eat a lot of popsicles get front seats to the Foo Fighters, whatever it is that they've got to do. So tell me about that. Tell me about the Foo Fighters. I mean, oh, you told gosh. us a little bit already, but I mean, you got to do the pre-show. What was that like? Uh, so I threw out into the universe on Twitter that I was Foo Fighters' biggest fan and I would be a Dreamforce and, um, Dream, and, and Salesforce ended up reaching out and saying, hey, would you like to be part of the pre-show? And I said, I would be honored. And so uh, they did a little interview with me um, just discussing, you know, what, what songs I would want to hear yeah. or they, they had me, do, you know, if you could look into the camera and give a message to Dave Grohl, what would it be? And uh -huh. thankfully, I think I nailed it. And you what know. was that message? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was from the heart, it was, okay. Dave, I love you. Um, but uh, but I, I went through the pre-show and, and it was nice and even people on LinkedIn were like, oh my God, I was watching with my husband and I saw somebody I was connected with on LinkedIn on TV and you did so great. And I was like, I hope I wasn't too dorky, but thank you. Um, and uh, what ended up happening because it was right before the show, right. I got out into the audience and I realized that like the crowd had already filled in and so I couldn't get my magical spot front and center in the stage but people started turning around and they're like there's Vanessa Vanessa who or who is the super fan that we all know about because the she had real, said something on Twitter the real Vanessa Grant yeah the real Vanessa Grant <laughs> now it wasn't the prof I wore I was wearing the t-shirt I like you can tell how big a fan is by how obscure their t-shirt is right and I was wearing the t-shirt for Dave Grohl's barbecue catering company okay <laughs> So nobody else would know that except me, who is the Foo Fighters super fan. So as soon as I got there, like people saw me and were like, it's Vanessa Grant. And everybody parted and were like, you go straight up front and center. And it was, it was like chills almost I got from the Ohana really right. delivering, the, you know, everybody looking out for me. Right, right. That's amazing. And before you were talking about speaking, we talked a little bit about, you know, speaking engagements and things like that. You've got a speaking engagement coming up. Tell I us do. about that. And where where is it and what's your subject matter? Um, I'm going to be doing a session with Tracy Green next month at Tahoe Dreamin'. Um, I think it's called uh, Avoiding Design Debt and User Frustration. Okay. Is that uh, late October or late November? Late October. It's like 21st, 22nd around there? I think there? it's the 28th. 28th, okay. And uh, You're going to be there, right? I'm going to try and be there if I can. Depends. I've got a band I might need to see instead, but we'll see. I'm just joking. I'm going to try and be there. <laughs> but so what's maybe a key point if people can't get to that session? What's maybe one of the key points that you're going to be really covering deeply? I think it needs to be part of every Salesforce professional's 
just the definition of done is needs to include user experience design. Yeah. If there's it, it's not worth making unless users are going to want to use it. Right. And so I think when you're especially when you're consulting um, when you're gathering business requirements, you can have you can pass it off to somebody who's configuring or developing, and it's very challenging to put in acceptance criteria or business requirements that the user needs to want to actually use it. Um, so, I think incorporating user experience design, you know, where the field should be, how the navigation is going to be, what's it feel like end to end, right. um, the error message, even down to the error messages. Um, I think that is the, you design with people in mind rather than business requirements in mind, and I think ultimately that leads to better solutions. Absolutely. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, bad, U, bad UI, bad UX, it's literally like having some like really okay room that's functional, like the, it's like having a kitchen you never want to go into, it, right? Exactly. Like you don't know where the freaking knives are. Like it's a nightmare. And you know what? You, you, you only have an opportunity to have a first impression once. And when you debut something to users and they go like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. How do I get to that thing? Yeah. As intuitive as you can make something, like that is what you want. Like there's so much focus on MVP, like minimum viable product. Like nobody likes MVP. You don't want something that's viable. You want something that you're going to love. Like, yeah. like make it do something really, really well. That I already know how to do. Yes. Right. Yeah, there you go, Vanessa Grant. Okay, so if you're going to leave our view, we're going to wrap this up, okay. but if you're going to leave our viewers with like the one big tip, and I know you got a million tips, okay, just pick any old tip, any tip from the grab bag that you've learned since moving to your latest company, you're at Simplis, you're doing solutions architecture, right? Yep. Okay, that's a little bit different from the BA work that you've yeah. been doing for many years. Um, what's the biggest thing that you've learned about implementation or the product or working with people or about yourself in your own career having made this big jump and really drinking from the fire hose for the last couple of months? Uh, I think I have really appreciated uh, how difficult it is to, to resource projects where, I mean, you're a recruiter, how difficult is it to, to find people to, to, to work at these companies and so it's hard. So, yeah. So it's really hard. <laughs> so when you've got a project, like you've got to find people that already work for your company, yeah. that have those certain sets of skills that the client needs, and it's it's much more challenging than I realized. But the other thing that I've realized, and sorry that's two tips, but being resourceful is the most important aspect of being a solution architect. I don't need to know everything. I need to know how to find out how to know everything. Right. right. It's often not the how, but the who, right? Who yep. who knows what I don't know? Let me go tap them and figure it out. Yep. Yep, yep. Don't try to be a hero on everything. Just find the experts and be efficient. There you go. Vanessa, this has been awesome. Getting to meet you in person. It's awesome to yeah. meet you in person. <laughs> so, uh, what's one of your favorite YouTube channels? Is it Josh Force? It's absolutely Josh Force. How did you know? <laughs> I don't know, just kind of a wild guess. <laughs> and if you were going to point someone to go find a really good um, uh, opportunity for their career in the Salesforce ecosystem. What's the website that you would probably point them to? Oh gosh, uh, you know, honestly, just sorry, sorry, sorry. Sale, if, yeah, the, I would absolutely point them if they were an architect or a developer or somebody mm -hmm. who is definitely very established in the ecosystem. I would definitely send them to the SalesforceRecruiter.com. Hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> For more entry level folks, I would probably probably not probably not. I'd probably Monster. say you know or send them to the to, to you know LinkedIn and yeah. find me and and I'll you know I'll I'll throw There's some tips so your way. There's so much good stuff on LinkedIn. I really and you know one little tip that I think we might have talked about it before, but it's the internship and the volunteer work. That little drop down, which I'd never seen on LinkedIn before. So even if you're entry level, you can find some really cool stuff on LinkedIn and really narrow it down. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining me. This has been super awesome. My this pleasure. Is definitely like my best interview of Dreamforce so far. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, see you guys. Bye.